welcome everybody back to another Mando Lessons Live. Missed last week, but it's back here. These happen every Saturday that I'm around at noon Eastern Standard Time. Great to see everybody here. Looks like we got tons of folks here already. Lots of familiar faces. We've got Matthew from Tucson, Lewis from Evansville, Kansas City checking in, Minnesota, Minnesota again, Ireland, Colorado, Plymouth, Isle of Sky. Michigan, California, Charlottesville, Salem, Oregon, Pepperland, Oregon, Castleman on somewhere that I didn't quite catch, New Hampshire. Great to see you all here. Uh, so if you haven't been here before, welcome to a, to your first Mando Lessons Live. The way these things work is it's mostly just a about an hour of Q&A and I'll play some tunes and uh, answer as many questions. I love hearing what people are working on so don't be bashful, throw them out there. Everybody's kind of working on the same thing so I'm sure there's other people in the same spot as you. That first tune I played was Big Scioda, Big Scioda. I'm not entirely sure how to say it. I learned it at some point. It's a river in Tennessee? I can't remember. Maybe Chip's here and can keep me up to date on my fiddle tune knowledge. He's a master at that. All right, Marietta, Georgia, Tennessee. Kevin asked, do you ever do Google Hangout jams? I have not, no. Um, Keith, good to see you. Um, yeah, no, I'm mostly just doing the YouTube live stuff at this point, but you never know. Maybe sometime down the line, I'll try to do a Google Hangout jam. It's always fun to experiment with new stuff. All right, well, I am running on very little sleep and I haven't actually touched a mandolin in over a week. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I've been out of the country for the last week. Got back in at past 1 a.m. last night and woke up at 7.30. So <laughs> if I'm a little scatterbrained, now you know why. Kentucky, awesome. Lynchburg, Tennessee. Maybe I'll play another tune, but if people have questions, by all means, throw them out there. I don't know what this is going to be. jazzy version of what's the name of that tune can't quite remember the name at the moment speed the plow is the name of that one it's usually a cross tune for fiddlers but i play it out of standard tuning 
Uh, I'm still kind of riding on that. I think last time I did one of these, I mentioned that I just watched this great, if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out. A great documentary on Sam Bush um, called Revival, maybe with a colon and some words after that. The Sam Bush story, something like that. I can't remember. If you look up Revival Sam Bush, it's a great documentary. It's got a bunch of mandolin players in it. Um, so I'm getting a lot of that kind of funky chop stuff still thinking about that documentary it's really great um got a couple questions in here uh miss matty says what would you say is a good price to pay for a mandolin uh it really depends um there's a video i did on my channel here called it's like 50 versus 350 versus five thousand dollar mandolin um you know there's there's mandolins you can get out there for, for about 50 bucks the kind of short of it is you never know quite what you're going to get. I got one in just to make that video and I had to send it back because the top was totally caved in. Had to get another one. Second one was okay, but not 100% able to be set up like like I like to be able to set them up myself. Uh, I could have brought it to a to a shop, but uh that would have been another 50 plus maybe $100 to get it really dialed in. For about 350 bucks, you can uh get i really enjoy but i'm not sponsored by at this point uh the kentucky mandolins um what is it called the km 150 um is sort of what i tell people to get it's usually around 350 um really well set up online from a, there's a couple of stores like elderly or the mandolin store that'll do a really great job setting it up be ready to go dialed right in when you get it um so i think you know the kentucky i've got one i love it uh, that's a great place to start for a couple hundred bucks. You can get them even cheaper if you look on Craigslist, find them used, or on the Mandolin Cafe Classifieds. Um, so they're out there. A couple hundred bucks, probably a safe place to start. You can try that $50 one, but you never quite know what you're going to get, and it might be more aggravating than it is fun, which is not a great way to start out playing an instrument because fun is the most important part. All right, we got somebody talking about Sam Bush. Anthony says, The thing that drew me to the mandolin was the joy I see and saw when Sam Bush plays his mandolin. That's the truth, you know? It's I'm similarly inspired by Sam. He's a an incredible player, great dude, and uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. Steve says, Who plays the trombone in the corner behind me? Is it that corner? It is that corner. Oh, that's my girlfriend Emma's trombone. I don't play the trombone. I don't know how to play anything that involves air coming out of my mouth, really. Uh, cool. Andrew says he's learned a bunch of tunes. I wouldn't say you owe me anything. Um, I appreciate the sentiment, but it's all, you know, it's free for a reason. So it's all good. Uh, Watched last night. Oh, cool. Marty watched the Sam Bush video last night. That's great. Uh, we've got a couple of requests for Easter tunes and Christmas tunes. I don't I don't have a great repertoire of those. A lot of them are copyrighted. That said, every year I think this is the year I'm going to really research and find some uncopyrighted Christmas tunes and make some lessons. I didn't get around to it this year, um, but maybe next year. So apologies to keep that waiting. I think there are some holiday tune tablature uh over at mandolin cafe there's a little tablature section if you're a tab reader there also might be other lessons out there you could ask on mandolin cafe forums and see what people have for christmas tune lessons and uh learning resources and things like that there might be some books i'm not really sure but i bet there's stuff out there thanks to the power of the internet Lori says she's working on road to malvern a great Another great old time tune, Cross A by Jim Childress. Maybe I'll play that in a little bit. Ooh. Uh, recovering Basis says, I enjoyed watching Ricky Skaggs play Bill Monroe. Oh, okay, yeah. Bill Monroe's mandolin at the Country Music Hall. Did you see that live? That must have been amazing. Um, all right. Hello from Washington. Diana, great to have you here. Hey, Ted. Oh, Ted's brother. Great to have you here. Cool. In the car, headed to Vermont. Texas. Excellent. Cool. Sam Bush, Bush is going to be playing in Kentucky in January. That's good to know. Wish I, 
I've seen him a bunch of times back when I would go to bluegrass festivals like Gray Fox in upstate New York. But I uh, haven't been back there in a while. I'd love to get back there, but summers get so busy. Um, uh, covering bases has had a breakthrough of sorts. Figured out how to, Steve Earle plays Copperhead Road on the mandolin, and it sounds pretty decent. I can play Liberty at half speed now, not quite full speed. That's great. Glad to. I love hearing your progress recovering bases. It seems like every time I log on, you're working on something, and that's that's great to see. And it makes me happy to hear other people really making breakthroughs and making progress every week. That's good stuff. Cool. Yep. Oh, so Wyatt says he bought a fifty dollar mandolin originally, but the F hole caved in. That's what happened to the first one I bought. It was caved in when I took it out of the box. But now he's got a lore. Yep. The so the the lore brand rather than Lloyd Lore Gibson mandolins from the twenties, but the lore is a great brand. For about three fifty you can get a F three ten. I'm not familiar with that model, but if it's made by the lore, then I'm sure it's great. My mando is sounding and playing great since I got it set up. Glad to hear it. Yeah, I think that's one of the best things you can do for a mandolin is uh, get it set up, spend a little bit of money, get it really dialed in, or try to work on it yourself. And it's uh, it can really aid the playing and the sound of the instrument. Can you play Joy to the World? I don't know that one off the top of my head. I, mean, I had that little melody, but I, I don't I don't know how to do that one really. I'm also I'm also curious about copyright on a lot of that old stuff. <laughs> oh, well, maybe there are some Easter tunes. No problem. I'm I'm sure there are some great Easter tunes out there. Any suggestions on an app or software to help tune a piano? I have no idea. I would love to learn to tune a piano. It seems like a really, I mean, people go to like school for it. So it's, it's not the most, uh, it's, I think it's a lot harder than tuning the mandolin. But uh, I bet there are apps out there. That might be a question for like a piano tuning forum. All right. Greetings from Savannah. Any idea on exercises to build speed? Yeah, I've got a couple lessons in the technique and fundamental section of my website um, on building speed. I think one thing that's great is really working on, you know, get a tune that you're really familiar with and play it as slow as you can. And if you find any holes in your playing where your pick doesn't feel like it's going in the right direction or you're missing a note here and there, really just slow it down so it's kind of almost uncomfortably slow to play and make sure you're getting a good tone. And that'll really showcase any lapses in your technique and in your uh, knowledge of the tune. Fill them in and then speed it back up and then use a metronome to slowly push your speed. So get it to a place where not only can you play it through once perfectly, but see if you can get through three times through the tune playing it um, without getting lost or getting mixed up or having your pick direction get um, backwards, things like that. And yeah. I think that'll help a lot. I'll break things up here a little bit with a tune. I'll play a little Road to Malvern since somebody was requesting it earlier, or was playing it, was talking about playing it earlier. Got the B part.
All right, there's a little bit of kind of confused Road to Malvern. It's been a while since I played that tune. I also get it a little mixed up with Red Prairie Dawn by Gary Harrison. Um, especially after not playing for a couple weeks. It's uh, it's really interesting. I feel like I lose, when I, whenever I like don't play for a while, I lose a little bit of kind of muscle memory, which can be nice sometimes. It really can help me like... Uh, it's it sort of with some of the muscle memory I can kind of get out of some ruts where I'm kind of always playing the same licks and stuff but at the same time I also get a little rusty on the tunes sometimes oh yeah traditionalmusic.uk is a good source for mandolin tunes with tab that is totally true there's a lot of great stuff on there oh Miss Maddie says I'm new here Glad to have you. Thanks for joining in. Uh, my name is Baron Collins Hill. I run the website mandolessons.com and I live in Maine in Northeast USA. Ah, uh, Daybreak and Dixie. I, I never really learned how to do that one. I should I should work on that a little. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to play that one. <laughs> but uh that's a great tune. I think there's a great version of that with like three or four mandolins on Mandolin Extravaganza, the David Grisman album, Bluegrass Mandolin Extravaganza. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a like a, or maybe it's like everybody playing at the end of the album. There's some really mandolin heavy version of that that's just great. Yellow Rose Farm says, do you watch Peter McKinnon? I've watched a little bit of his stuff, yeah. He's uh, not a mandolin related, but he's a video maker. I learned a lot of stuff from about like how to use cameras and stuff from some of his early tutorials. It's good stuff. Kevin is re is working on Red Wing and asks if I can give it a go. Yeah, uh, Red Wing. I'll switch into the other camera here. Make use of that. Yeah, Red Wing. I got Little Wing in my head for a second, and I don't know any Jimi Hendrix. Uh, Denise, good to see you here. Says, I'm playing many tunes at 120 and one to 140, but I'm finding that my right hand is cramping up. Am I pushing myself too fast? I think, in general, it probably means that you're kind of pushing yourself, but at the same time, pushing yourself isn't always a bad thing. So as long, what I would recommend if you're really playing too fast and you find, like, okay, I'm locking up, the fact that you're noticing that you're locking up is a really important thing to notice and a good feeling to know what it feels like. So what I would recommend is, you know, bring it down to 100. Um, well, first of all, maybe bring it down to like 40 beats per minute. Make sure there's not anything going on with your right hand in terms of like pick direction. Make sure you really know what all the notes in your left hand you want, what all those notes you want to be are right where you want them. Uh, and then, you know, once you really are sure you've got that 
solid fundamental of the tune. You know, take it up to 100 or wherever you're really comfortable and can just play it like five, ten times through and not get tired. Get it to that point, um, and from there, again, you know, work up with that metronome like I was talking about earlier. Give it a couple clicks, take it up to 105, 110, you know, find that spot, and then slowly push through. And occasionally, you know, go up to 140, 150, you know, just really push yourself too far, and you'll see where your technique starts to break down and how you're getting tense. And it, But at the same time, it'll give you that physical sense of what it takes to uh, really get your... Uh, I just noticed I didn't have one. I, one of my batteries is about to die on one of my cameras, so I might lose my close-up cam, but I can always put in a new one if need be. Uh, I forget what I was saying now. Um, oh yeah, by pushing yourself really too far, you can, uh, you'll skip that sense of what it feels like, and you'll get that physical sensation of this is what it feels like to play really fast, so that you're kind of coming at it from both angles, trying to speed up to the place you want to be, also going too fast so you have somewhere to come down to. It's really helpful. I try to do that in a lot of ways when I'm working on new music. Not just through speed, but through the amount of ornamentation you're adding to a tune. You know, play it really sparse and then play it super ornamented. And then somewhere there's going to be that sweet spot in the middle that sounds and feels best. Awesome. William from West Palm Beach, Florida. Glad to have you here. Thanks for joining in. Uh, Road to Columbus. I do know Road, Road to Columbus. Road to Columbus. I can't think of how it goes right now, but I'll keep poking at it in my head and see see what happens here. How do I? Uh, Jane says, "How do I play E minor pentatonic scale? A E minor pentatonic scale, and can I play it with the G major pentatonic scale?" Yeah, I think so. <laughs> So an E minor pentatonic, I'll switch back to my close-up view here, is going to be uh, let's see, what is it? One, two, three. That's the one you get into uh, minors. I think there, I know less about minor pentatonics. Um, I think there's going to be a number of E minor pentatonics, but uh, if you're... So you're going to start with your E, and this pentatonic is pretty much picking out some of the more important notes. So in a major pentatonic, it would be one, two, three, five, six, one. So if we did that with minors, you could have one, two, flat, three, five. Flat seven one or there's gonna be a number of them, um, but if you take uh, like your E minor Aeolian, is that what it's called? Which is gonna be like the same notes as a G major. That's a good question. So in G, you're gonna have G A B D E G. So that would be your E minor pentatonic using the same notes as a G major pentatonic is E, G, A, B, D, E. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Yeah, I think a lot of that stuff is going to be more helpful if you're really... Um, if you have an idea of what you want in your head, or, or at least like know when you're hitting a note that you don't want to hear, um, so really what kind of working through that, I think can be um, at least for me more helpful than thinking about specific scales, because you know I can go through and if I've got if I've got like an E drone.
Um, you know, there's so many different ways you can kind of craft those minor scales that you can play around with them a little bit. And at least for me, I don't find minor pentatonics to be quite as helpful as like that major, classic major pentatonic. Um, but yeah, definitely good to think about that sort of stuff. Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, William says, been playing all your sheet music on piano and my flute with my mandolin around my neck. Cool. I'm always happy to hear when people are using my lessons for other instruments. You know, there's a lot of whistle players and flute players and fiddle players and banjo players out there. And all this music works for all of that. So, yeah, keep up the good work. Glad, glad to hear that. Ah, Worm Picker says, you look at Box at the Fox, uh, at Box the Fox. I have not yet. I got your email. Um, I'm really looking forward to looking into it, but I've been out of town for a couple weeks and things have been crazy. So I, I have like 70 emails that are unread that need, and those are just the ones that I know I need to respond to. So I, I will get there eventually. I'm looking forward to checking out that tune, but I just haven't quite had the chance. I know, I'll, Recovering Basis says, I love Pelican's Requests. Me too. I wish I knew more of them. I'm a little out of touch on the bluegrass stuff, and Pelican's got great, great taste in bluegrass tunes, and I wish I could keep do more of those. Uh, oh yeah. Pelican says you could use, or could you use some of those E minor pentatonic scales in the Blackberry Blossom B part? Definitely. So Blackberry Blossom. Let's see. I'll go zoom in again. So we got uh. Is the A part. And then here's the B part. So that's kind of a pentatonic right there. One, two, three, four, five, one. And then in terms of like soloing, you could do a... Something like that. Uh, you But yeah, definitely work on that E minor pentatonic stuff on Blackberry Blossom B part. It's a great spot for it. Uh, Kevin says, I'm looking, I'm planning to move back to Washington, D.C. area next year and plan to attend some bluegrass jams. Need to learn some licks. Any suggestions? Uh, what I would recommend, I, I don't, you know, I think the best thing you can do for kind of your lick repertoire is... Just listen to a bunch of classic bluegrass. Listen to Bill Monroe, whoever really kind of inspires you as a mandolinist and whoever you think like, man, they've got great licks. Listen to their stuff. Really take the time to work out some of their licks. Um, you can spend a little time, you know, just getting like the idea of like, oh, it seems like people are doing sort of licks all the time or you hear somebody do something really cool. I don't know what that was, but you can say, okay, I really like that. I'm going to take that little moment and slow it down. And it's going to be more work to really get that note for note. And it might be harder than like finding a, a big list of uh, licks with like tablature and stuff. But I think it's going to be a hundred times more useful to take like, oh, that I liked what happened right there with that lick. And take it and put it in the slow, slow down software or tunetranscriber.com is a great resource. It's just a free website where you can upload any mp3 that you have, slow it down, make li loops, things like that. Super helpful for learning licks. Um, and just take it super slow. I'm 
sure I'm playing this slightly different every time, but you know, getting it super slow and then speeding up. And then get it, and then try to, when you, whenever you're learning licks, I think it's really helpful. It can be a little uh, repetitive, but just try to put it in a lot for a little while, um, especially in your own practice time, not so much when you're playing out with a bunch of people, but even then, you know, I think like repetition is a great way to really get something into your repertoire, whether we're talking licks and music or tunes or a spoken language, you know, kind of the immersion, language immersion experience, whether we're talking spoken language or music is a huge part of it that's really important. Columbus Stockade Blues. I don't know that one. Um, yeah. Um, Recovering Basis says, if I were you, I would practice and be a lot for those bluegrass jams. That can definitely be helpful. I think it can often depend. I think, you know, go to what can be really beneficial when you're specifically trying to get into a jamming situation is go to the jams that you want to join in on. The first time you go, don't even, you know, necessarily bring a mandolin or bring a mandolin, but don't pop it out um don't take it out of the case and just listen and sort of make some take you can take some notes of like okay they're playing these songs they're playing in these keys and if you find that it's a, a jam that's not playing in the key of b then maybe that's not going to be the most helpful but that said you know bluegrass players are liable to play in all kinds of crazy keys um so if, if it's one of those jams where people are really playing in a bunch of different keys and that's one not one of your strong suits Definitely putting in some time playing in those keys a little bit. And then when you get back to the jam, you'll be that much more comfortable and ready to kind of get some of those licks in and be able to follow along and take some breaks and things like that. That's uh, great advice for covering bassist. William Edmund says, when is your album coming out? Well, I have a couple albums. Um, I don't know when my next album is coming out, but I have some in the works. So 2019, I expect to have at least one album out. <laughs> um, but right now you can go to mandolessons.com and there's a store page or a shop page I don't remember what I called it but on there I've got a solo old time mandolin album that's just a bunch of my favorite old time tunes from a couple years ago um, that one's always fun I've got a band with a fiddle player where I play mandolin and tenor guitar um, called Velocipede and you can find those albums also in the, the tunes or, or the, the shops link on my website uh, there's a couple options out there, and yeah, take check those out if you haven't already. Thank you. Oh, and Pelican's got more great requests that I cannot fulfill, unfortunately. The Turnaround on Lonesome River or White Dove. I don't know either of those. Recovering Basis, thank you so much for the Super Chat donation. Super Chat donations are YouTube's way of throwing me a little bit of money, and I appreciate it. Uh, you can also... Support me through PayPal. There's some links in the description or Patreon. That said, everything's always free, but those sort of donations really help me keep doing this sort of stuff. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Recovering Bassist. Rhea says, Tone Guard or Armrest? I've used both in the past. Currently, not. Okay, I think I'm back here. Let me know if my sound came back on. <coughs> I, uh, 
ran out of batteries on one of my cameras and it was the camera let me get that one back in focus here there we go uh cool sound is back yeah batteries are important usually i just have it plugged in like to the wall like a fake battery into the wall but it's been a little while since I've done this and I am sleep deprived so I totally forgot to do that on one of my cameras and that's the one where the sound comes from okay so the last question was I think I was on the tone guard armrest uh, question I've used both in the past right now I don't use a tone guard um, I do have an armrest um, I think they're both good accessories to play around with. If you don't want to spend the, you know, whatever it is, 60 bucks or so on a tone guard, what I did when I was trying it out was I just took a cookie sheet and, like, you know, put some padding on it so I didn't scrape up my mandolin. But you can just take, or sorry, not a cookie sheet, like a a drying, uh, what are those called? Like a little wire bread drying rack. I'm blanking on the name. Again, not so much sleep. But, uh, you know, take something like that, a little wire trivet or something and just see how that affects the sound remember put a little something on it so it doesn't scratch up your instrument but i did i totally did that when i was like oh do i want to get a tone guard it seems like a good idea and then i was like oh i do like that sound got a tone guard same thing with an armrest um a little harder to kind of build one i like these i've got this mcclung armrest uh not sponsored or anything but uh i love them they kind of have a little bit of an angle to them that puts your arm in a nice spot. I know a couple of you out there have these too. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything else up here before my batteries died? Pentatonic scale for the key of A. Great question from the Pelican 3. Just want to make sure. on the thing lost sound okay yep okay cool uh pentatonic scale on the key of a i will zoom back into my recently charged up uh let's see here so key of a you can start on the open a string so it's that's what it sounds like and it's a second fret fourth fret Open E string, 2nd fret, 5. Or in note names, that's A, B, uh, C sharp, E, F sharp, A, A, B, C sharp, E, F sharp, A. Or in numbers, that's 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 1. Or you can do it down low. In fret numbers, that's two, six, uh, two, four, six, two, four, open, two, four, six, two, four, open. Great question. It's great to, uh, work out your pentatonic scales in a bunch of different keys, get that sound in your head, and you can really let that sound guide you in the same way you can with a full major scale. You know, a lot of times you hear kind of the do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do of a major scale. And even if you don't know how to play it, you know it's when, when, you know when it's wrong. So you'll hear like and say, ooh, that wasn't, that wasn't quite major. Um, that can be really helpful just to get that sound of the pentatonic scale in your head so you know when you're hearing it and you know when something changes in it. Chip says, I'm visiting Portland. Portland, Maine? Portland, Oregon? I'm not sure which. Know any pickers out here? Uh, depends on what Portland you're talking about. I'm going to be in Portland for a couple weeks this winter. Um, Oregon. Uh, but if you're in Maine, I could probably hook you up. I don't know many in Oregon, unfortunately. But hope to meet some at some point. Yeah, uh, dish drainer will work. Things like that for the uh, tone guard replacement just to test it out 
Pelican 3 says, you ever listen to Marty Stewart play the mandolin? A little bit. I've seen him a couple times at Gray Fox. Love his music. Great performer, great musician. Nice dude. Oh, but I'm not as familiar with him as some of the other guys. But I should, he's been around forever and I, I love what he does. Um, I should revisit him. It's been a while since I've listened to his music. So Anthony's got a great question. It says, trying to get to the next level and thinking of finding a teacher and wondering what makes the difference for you. Personal instructor versus daily lessons or just consistent online lessons or all of the above. I think everybody has um, different learning styles. So definitely experiment. And, you know, part of it can be finding the right teacher that's uh, going to motivate you and has the same interests as you and can show you what you're really interested in. Um, I've always been more of kind of a self-guided, self-taught musician. That said, I've learned a lot from, from mentors and teachers and friends along the way. I think one of the biggest things that you can do for yourself is make kind of a clear goal of what you want to get to, whether it's a piece of music that you say, I really want to be able to play lit, play this or an artist. Like I want to be able to play like Sam Bush or I want to learn these licks or this hard tune, you know, set yourself a goal is really going to help you progress towards it versus just saying like, oh, I want to get better and not really knowing what that kind of end goal is. And that end goal can always change. You know, you say like, oh, I want to learn to play Turkey in the Straw. And then you learn Turkey in the Straw and say, great, now I want to learn Turkey in the Straw on the key of B major. If you're in the kind of bluegrass world and want to work on keys and say, okay, that's going to take a while. Get it. From there, I say, I want to play Turkey in the Straw in B minor and turn it into a minor tune. You know, you can progress your things like that. And you can have really specific goals like those. Or you can say, like, for the next six months, I really want to listen to a little bit of Sam Bush every day. Learn a Sam Bush tune every week. And also learn a specific transcribed Sam Bush lick every week. Um, and that, you know, by the end of those six months you are going to have a much better idea of what Sam Bush is all about, and you're going to really have internalized a lot of his play. So that's sort of the way that I approach that. Or, you know, if you have friends that you're that are playing music and you want to be able to join in with them, that's a great kind of v vaguer, less specific goal. But there's, I think, having a particular goal and then figuring out steps to get to that goal, whether it's like, okay, I want to play with my friends. First step, figure out what tunes they play and what keys they're playing in and how fast they're playing so I can go home and practice some of that stuff, make recordings, all that sort of stuff. Um, but the same at the same time, there are definitely kind of one-on-one -on -one instructors that can help you out with a lot of this stuff and really keep you on a guided path and help you create that trajectory for yourself. So yeah, I'd say try a little bit of everything um, and figure out what works best for you because it really is different for everybody. Cool. Uh, we got Matthew's got some suggestions for Jans in DC. Cool. Portland, Oregon. I do not know that there's, oh, what's that guy's name? Zach something is out in Oregon. I've just seen him on YouTube. I've never met him. Uh, I think he plays more like kind of jazz, but a little bit of everything. Uh, Caleb Clotter lives in Portland, Oregon. I think he used to do an old time jam, but doesn't anymore. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know. I, what I would re recommend is go on the Mandolin Cafe forums and there's a whole sub forum on like jams and places to meet. And if you said like, hey, who's in Portland, Oregon? I bet you could find a jam or create a mandolin meetup. It'd be a lot of fun. And if it uh, happens in mid to late December, let me know and maybe I can make it. Because I'm going to be there from like the 15th until early January. Um, so, Yeah. Let me know if you're around. I don't know if I'll have a mandolin with me, but I probably could scrounge one up somewhere. Uh, do I know Lost Indian? I always get that tune a little confused because it's a little bit like Cherokee Shuffle in some old time versions, I think. I can't think of it off the top of my head, sorry. Tipping the Corn, that's another one I don't know. Lots of excitement and feeling in the playing of Marty Stewart. That's the truth. All right. Well, I think it's time to do a little bit of our... Oh, I even looked it up and I can't remember what it is again. It's time for the Mando Lessons Live Jam. 
What is the tune? I can't. Oh, I looked it up and I've already forgotten it again. Probably somebody out there can tell me what it is before I get to it, but I'll look it up here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, do. Ah, the Wren. Thank you, everybody. <coughs> Keeping me on track. That's the hardest part about this for me is just remembering what I said we were going to do last time. Great, the Wren. So the way this works, if you're new here, get your mandolin out, get it up and tuned. And uh, we will play through the Wren, which is on my website. Uh, you can check out, there's tablature and chords if you want to chord along or play along and you're not familiar with the tune. But every week I sort of say, you know, try to challenge yourself in some extent, to some extent. So if you already knew the tune, maybe work on some ornamentation or improvisation. Um, we'll swap back and forth between I'll play the melody, you play the chords, I'll play the chords, you play the melody. Maybe there'll be some harmony. Play it through like five times maybe. And uh, yeah, great tune in the key of E minor. So yeah, you know, even if this is the first time you're hearing it, just try to pick out a couple notes. If you're uh, an old hand at the Wren, then just uh, you know, go crazy. Try to get some improv and some ornamentation and all that sort of stuff. Just kind of challenge yourself wherever you're at, and we'll have fun with it. I'm gonna switch into the close-up camera here. So it sounds like this. Here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> A two.
Birdie Play Melody. super fun the wren if you're not familiar with that tune it's a great one a lot of folks know it around the world it's actually not called the wren it's just a, i think it's an andro uh, it's a breton tune where they don't really give tunes the names but uh that's the name that it's sort of adopted in the states and probably elsewhere too um great tune there's a lot of great tunes in the breton tradition from Brittany in france um lots of great tunes that are sort of like that little simple tunes with a lot of great chords and great grooves it's one of my favorite kind of music um yeah laurie's got a great addition to the portland oregon fiddle tune scene is that there's a great collection of books called the portland collection um and they've got a bunch of great standard tunes all in standard notation no mandolin tab as far as i know um but I've got all those books. They're great. I learned a lot of tunes when I was getting going out of those books. And that that repertoire really has kind of gone all over the States, at least, and probably further abroad because those is like three, maybe even four plus volumes now. Um, I just remember when I started, there were just the two. And now I think there's at least three and maybe four. I've kind of lost track. But um, great tunes, great collection. I uh, highly recommend checking that out if you want to expand your fiddle tune repertoire. The King of the Birds. Cool. <laughs> uh, cool. Awesome. That's great to know. Matthew says he was in Portland last week and sat in at a great old time session at Flipside Coffee Shop. I'm going to have to write that down. See if I can make it out there and try to get to that because I'm going to be out there for a while and would love to play some music with some folks. Well, all right, I guess the time has come to pick next week's jam tune. Oh, is it going to be next week, though? Yes, I think I'm around next week. Let me just check the old calendar here. Oh, yeah, I'm around next week, and then it's going to be maybe the next year. It might be January after next week that we do another one of these, But because I'm going to be out in Oregon. But maybe I'll try to do something. It might not be as high tech, but maybe I'll try to do something a little more low-key out there and see what happens. Okay, so what is it going to be next week? Take some suggestions. I might have even taken some suggestions last week that we can remember, but I can't remember. So uh, if you got a tune you really want to play, preferably something off of my website so people can learn it. Um, not too fast. Uh, it doesn't need to be a total beginner tune. Cold Frosty Morning is a great tune. I'd love to do that one. Picking a Pen is not on my website and copyrighted, so I unfortunately can't do that one, Pelican. Um, although that is a great song. June Apple or Liberty. Cool. Matthew says also check out bubbaguitar.com for Portland, uh, Portland Jam Calendar and information. Awesome. I am going to do that. When is the next office hours for patrons? So I do one of these for uh, the folks who support me on Patreon at $5 a month up. Um, and I think the next. It's going to either be, I think probably uh, the 10th, Monday the 10th is going to be the Patreon. So I do a kind of private one. These ones go real fast, um, but it's nice with the Patreon ones. I can really slow down and get in more in depth with other uh, questions, um, which I always like doing. Yeah, it's a good scene. So if you're interested in that for $5 a month, you can join in on those smaller ones. I think it's probably going to be on the 10th this week or this month Lewis uh, so let's go with that first suggestion cold frosty morning it's on my website 
So that's the tune. It's A-A-B-B, -B, but I just played A-B because we're running out of time here. But that's a great suggestion, and we will do that next week. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you all so much for another great Saturday afternoon. Always fun to do these. And I hope you have a great weekend, a great morning or night or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next week. Uncle Bobby, great to see you. Sorry that you caught the end of it, but I'll be back next week. Thanks so much. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.